Hello darling, you're gonna help. You're actually more of a hindrance than a help, but that's okay. Okay, so we're back again for another curating the perfect shelves for maximum riz. <sighs> kind of feel like an idiot every time I say that, but that's fine. So I am crouching on the floor because we are at my bottom two shelves here. So this shelf is my paranormal shelf. I think this is going to be really hard for me to get rid of books from because paranormal is one of my favorite genres of anything like books, movies, TV shows, any of that stuff. I love it. Don't go. Paranormal things are just so intriguing to me. But this bottom shelf is all of my fantasy books. Fantasy is like my least favourite genre lately, so I'm hoping it'll be easy to just find the books that I really want to read. Let's start taking everything off the shelves. I should have said, if you are new to this series, then I will leave the playlist down below. But this is just a series where I'm going through all of my books and it's not about unhauling books. It's about finding the books that I'm really interested in and the ones that I really want to keep on my shelves that are going to make me excited to read them because I can see them on my shelves. But yes, this is the third installment. So the first one I did my sci-fi non-fiction comics and manga shelf. Then the next one I did was my contemporary and classics shelves which you can see my contemporary is looking all nice there. So now we're going to the paranormal fantasy and then in the next two episodes of this series we'll get to the genres that I really really like. So I was going from like easiest to hardest because I'm not prepared. Anyways we take everything off of the shelf, then I put back books that immediately are like, yeah, I want to read them. And then I go through the synopsis of all the others to figure out if I do really want them or if I don't want them. Or there are some where there are maybes where I don't necessarily want them on the shelf, but I'm not ready to part with them just yet. They get put into a bag and in, put into another room in my house. All right, let's go. I got the cash in the bag, stadium pack. This life gone, live it up on the attack Baby, I'm bad I just wanna get caught up in this life I'm crazy, I'm bad Doing no cap Only God wants you better go Live it up, cash in the back Stadium pack Baby, I'm bad yeah. Baby, I'm bad I just wanna stay bad, stay mad Shit by my shoulder cause they treat me like an outcast I ain't gonna take that, stay back I'll be swinging hard till the hits come in all caps I ain't gonna lay back, pray that Someone's gonna help me, ain't nobody like that I ain't gonna wait, that's all fact Give me one shot and I'll never get the throne back I'm sick of being cautious I'ma go cause something, can't stop this I'ma steal everybody's lane, call it shoplift Sick of hearing everyone complain when they thoughtless Place the pain, it's like candy canes It makes me go change into a better frame Into a better name, society's insane We all live for fame, yeah Cash in the bag, stadium packed Born a rock star in this life Gonna live it up on the attack Baby, I'm bad, I just wanna get caught up in this life I'm crazy, I'm mad, do it no cap Only God wants you, better go live it up, cash in the bag And here's all the books This is a lot, this is gonna take me a while What piles should I do? I might do sequels because I know that there's a few of those around And then probably like some popular books I could also do So that's all of the sequels It's so many and like I've barely even touched the stacks okay so I've got a big stack here of immediate yeses that I'm definitely keeping we have Amari and the Great Game by B.B. Olsen this is the second book in the what's it called like Supernatural Investigation I don't know something like that but it's a sequel to Amari and the Night Brothers I really loved Amari and the Night Brothers so I'm really looking forward to the second one we have Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor I really enjoyed Strange the Dreamer and this is the second and final book in that duology I need to get to this at some point but Strange the Dreamer took me an entire month to read so that kind of scares me um, and you can't really tell what this is because I don't have the dust jacket for it, but it is Del Toro Quest by Emily Rodder. 
This is like a bind up edition of eight. There are eight stories in this. I read the first one, which is The Forests of Silence. So I just have the rest of them to go, but they are quite fun. Then we have Queen of Shadows by Sarah J. Mass. This is, this is book four in the Throne of Glass series. I really like the Throne of Glass series. I do need to continue reading these, so I've got this one. And then because I have this one, I will pull out the next one, two, three. The next three from that series that I also have. Um, Kingdom of Ash, Tower of Dawn, and Empire of Storms in whatever order they're supposed to go in. Okay, so those are the like immediate sequels that I'm like, yes. Now onto all the others that I know I want to read. So we have The Rook by Daniel O'Malley. I recently hauled this. It sounded interesting because this person wakes up next to some corpses and it's kind of like a scavenger hunt on how to get her memory back and figure out what happened. So it sounded cool. Then we have Gap Year in Ghost Town by Michael Pryor. Uh, I love a good ghost story, so. Then we have The Dwarves by Marcus Heights. I love dwarves. And I have Piranesi by Susanna Clark. This just sounds super weird and I really want to read it. Then we have Ghost Ship by Detloff Reach. But ghosts, I love. The idea of a ghost ship, I love. And I have Malamanda by Thomas Taylor. It's like there's a creature. I don't know, creature feature. It sounds cool. And then because I have this, I also have Gargantus, which is the sequel, so keeping both of these. Then I have Mortlock by John Mayhew. It just, I mean, the cover just looks so creepy and I love it. It's also sprayed edges. Um, there's something about two orphans. One is a knife thrower in a magician's stage act and the other is an undertaker's assistant. That just sounds cool. I'm gonna keep that. And then I also have the sequel, which is The Demon Collector. I don't know if there's more in the series or not. Then I have Julie and the Phantoms, The Edge of Great, by someone, McCall Ozto. But I'm pretty sure this is just the novelization of the first episode of the show or something like that. But I freaking love the TV show. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. It's amazing. So sad it didn't get a second season, but that's Netflix for you. I will read this because I loved it. Then we have The Lab by Jack Heath. This is Jack Heath's middle grade series or young adult series or something like that. But I love Jack Heath's writing in the Timothy Blake series, one of my new favorite series. I will read kind of anything that he writes at this point, so. Then I have Interview with the Vampire by Anne Rice. It's one of those classics where like, I wanna read it and then watch the movie. I've never actually seen the movie. So I wanna read it at some point. It just scares me because the writing's really tiny. Then I have Dark Lover by J.R. Ward. Again, it's one of those like classic paranormal romance books. So I want to read that. And then I got this in a box set of the first six, so. I'll keep the next ones as well. Then I have The Gates by John Connolly. This just, the cover is my favorite, this is my favorite cover. And it just, it talks about the gates of hell. Like that sounds interesting. Then I have How to Train Your Dragon by Cressida Cowell. I've actually read this before, but I want to reread it and then continue on in the series. But I am thoroughly obsessed with the movies. And yes, this is very different. I would like to give it another go to see if I appreciate it for what it is and try not to compare it to the movie. But because I have this, I also have several more in the series. I have all of these. So I have Hero's Guide to Deadly Dragons, How to Twist a Dragon's Tail, How to Speak Dragonese, How to Cheat a Dragon's Curse, and How to Be a Pirate. I have all of those. The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. I'm really interested in this story. I know it's very hyped, but I'm very interested in it. And then I have Fern Gully by Diana Young. This is one of my favorite movies when I was a kid and I saw this in an op shop and I'm like, I, I need it. So I'm so looking forward to that. And then another of my favorite movies as a kid is The Secret of Nim, but the book is actually called Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim by Robert C. O'Brien. This was so good. But oh my god, what were my parents thinking letting me watch this as a child? It is terrifying. So that is all of the immediate yeses. And there's still so many books on my bed. Okay, so I've just gone through all the ones that are like popular on booktube at one time or another. So the first one that kind of went in the other category is A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J Mass. I don't really know what else to say about it, um, but I also have the novella A Court of Frost and Starlight, so I will be keeping those just to finish it off really. Out of all of the books that were like popular on booktube or whatever, I'm keeping all of them and 
who are all my maybes. So let's do the maybes. And this one kind of hurts a little bit, but it's uh, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clark. I really just hauled this and it's already in a maybe pile because I only picked it up because I've heard people say it's good. I don't know if I'm going to like it. Like magician stories, I don't always enjoy, but like magic in general stories, I sometimes do. So it's a weird mix. I'm not sure. And then the other maybe is Vampire Academy by Rochelle Mead. I read maybe like a hundred pages of this last year sometime and like it was good but I put it down and I just never picked it up again and I would have to start from the beginning again if I read it. I don't know if I can be bothered with this. Like I've heard it's good. Is it too YA? Like should I give it another go? I don't know. Please help me out. So it's another maybe. Oh yeah there was also one that I... Mm, should this also be a maybe? No, okay, this one I'm going to get rid of. That's All of Us Villains by Amanda Foody and Christine Lynn Herman. Because it just sounds like Hunger Games and I didn't like Hunger Games, so I think I'm getting rid of this. I want to do all of the books that I'm keeping, unfortunately. <laughs> not unfortunately, some of these I'm not as hyped about as others, but there's things in there that I'm like, oh yeah, I could enjoy that. So the first is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. Like, I want to read it, and my friend Max recently read it and he loved it, so maybe, and it does apparently have that like hauntingly beautiful writing that I enjoy, so I'm hopeful that I'll read this. I just don't know when I'm ever going to be in the mood for it, which is weird. So this one's also going to go on the maybe, because I don't know. Then I have Frostheart by Jamie Littler. This is the first in the Frostheart series. This just sounds fun and interesting, and it's There Are Monsters in the Snow. Then I have A Darker Shade of Magic by V. Schwab. The only reason this isn't in my maybe pile is because I know everyone will be like, read it, read it, read it. But Schwab and I are not getting along recently, but... I will give this a go. I'm more inclined to pick this up than The Night Circus. Then, speaking of Schwab, I have Gallant. This one actually sounds more interesting to me. Creepy old house. She's seeing ghouls. Ooh, it looks cool on the inside too. Then I have The Lies of Loch Lamora by Scott Lynch. It's the first in the Gentleman Bastards series. It gives Robin Hood vibes. Then I have House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Mass. This is the first in the Crescent City series. This sounds interesting and I'm kind of annoyed because it's like I don't want to like Sarah J Mass, but I keep liking some of her books. It's very annoying. Then I have The Devouring Grey by Christine Lynn Herman. This does sound interesting. I like the kind of creepy vibes that it is giving off. Then I have A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. Again, kind of creepy vibes. I want to give it a go. We have The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. This one sounds more intriguing to me. And then I have Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. And then I also have the next two books in that trilogy, Days of Blood and Starlight and Dreams of Gods and Monsters. I don't know what order they come in. I don't know, this one's the first. And this one does sound interesting. I just, I need someone to like push me to read these because these have been on my shelves for a long time. <laughs> There's still so many books to go. Okay, so the next little pile I made was a pile of books that I think I'm going to enjoy. And no surprise that a lot of them I'm keeping, but there are three on my maybe list. Okay, we'll do my maybe list first. So I have Magic Bites by Alona Andrews. This is the first in the Kate Daniels series. I thought I would like this because it seems kind of paranormal investigation, but just reading the synopsis, it sounds very young and I thought it was an adult book, but I don't know, something about it is just eh. If you've read it and it's good, let me know. Next up, I have Changeling by Steve Feasy. This, like, just reading the back, it sounds like kind of juvenile, kind of like a weird action movie almost, but it's not that. I don't know, it just sounds kind of stupid. Ugh. I feel bad saying that, but yeah. Okay, so this is now a no. And then the last one that's a maybe is Hunting Season by Dean Vincent Carter. Again, a werewolf type book, creepy cover, love that. But I don't know if I will like it because it's like, it's like they're hunting wolves or a wolf pack. And like that doesn't sound particularly interesting to me, but it could still be. So this is still a maybe. Okay, so two maybes and a no. Now onto the yeses. 
So first up, I have Master of Crows by Grace Draven. This story, I'm not particularly thrilled with, but I do want to read more of Grace Draven's works. I have read Radiance and one of my favourite books of all time, so I am keen to read more of her work. Then we have The Goblins of Bellwater by Molly Ringle. Also, is this not the most beautiful cover? I love this cover. Okay, so it says a story inspired by Christina Rossetti's eerie sensual poem, Goblin Market, which I'm very keen to read. It's just talking about like a goblin's curse. It does actually sound interesting. Then I have Aunt Enid, Protector Extraordinaire by Karen J. Carlyle. This is set in my town. <laughs> it's set in Adelaide. Like that's just hilarious. I didn't think that would be something that ever happens. I am so excited for this. And it's got like demons, fairies and magic. There's the other world. Aunt Enid is a 70 year old. She has an army of garden gnomes. Okay this sounds hilarious and I need to pick this up soon. Oh my god is it signed by the author? It's signed by the author. Yeah. Cool. Next up I have Angel Fall by Suzanne E. This could be interesting. I was a little bit hesitant about this. It was almost a maybe, but there's a chance. Then I have The Dead Fathers Club by Matt Haig. There are ghosts. Kind of all I need in stories is there's going to be a ghost. Then we have The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw. This sounds creepy and cool and there are witches and they're coming back for revenge maybe? Don't know. But also beautiful cover. We have The Scorpio Races by Maggie Steve Otter. I do love Maggie Steve Otter's writing style. I think it's really cool and that kind of like hauntingly beautiful vibe. Um, and something about water horses here sounds interesting. Then I have The Witching Hours, book one, The Vampire Knife by Jack and Salit. He says, do not look for fairies. You will not find them. And if you do, you will regret it. It sounds like a creepy middle grade and I'm always down for that. Next I have Peter Nimble and His Fantastic Eyes by Jonathan Oxia. This sounds really great. It's about a orphan who is blind. He's the greatest thief that ever lived, but it sounds super cool. Then I have The Replacement by Brenna Yovanoff. I've wanted to read this for years. I kept putting it off, but it is about a changeling child and he's grown up in the world and now he's dying. Sounds cool. And then I have The Summoning by E.E. E. Richardson. This is about people that did a summoning to try and scare someone and the summoning worked. It sounds kind of cool. Okay, so out of my bigger books and hardbacks, go a whole stack here I'm keeping, two maybes and one I'm gonna get rid of. So let's get into it. So the one that I'm gonna get rid of is Bayou Magic by Jewel Parker Rhodes. I had ummed and ahed about this in so many unhauls and I kept not unhauling it because it does sound interesting but I think it's like the second in a series and like it does sound interesting like it's not giving me the best emotions like I'm not like oh yeah I can see myself reading this soon and I can see myself enjoying it it's not giving me that vibe so I'm gonna finally unhaul it and then my two maybes so I have Pony by RJ Palacio I read the first chapter of this in my try chapter tag and it was it was okay. I didn't expect it to be as historical as it was and I kind of thought it would be more ghostly but it wasn't. I don't know if I'll like this. Then the next one is Necrophenia by Robert Rankin. The synopsis of this is absolutely bonkers. Like, go look up this book on Goodreads. Tell me if you can understand the synopsis because I can't. Okay, so that's it for those. Now on to all of the ones I'm keeping. So I have Monstrous Heart by Claire McKenna. Even though this is more of a romance than I would particularly like, there's stuff about leviathans and lighthouses, which I seem to enjoy lighthouses. But yeah, I'm gonna keep this and also the cover. Next one, I just, I can't believe I still haven't read this because it just, it sounds so good. That is The Reformed Vampire Support Group by Catherine Jinx. It is a support group for vampires. It sounds awesome. The cover is great. And it just sounds very cool. So I'm going to keep it. And then I also have the sequel, which does not have a good cover, but the sequel is The Abused Werewolf Rescue Club rescue group. So I'll be keeping that 
as well as this, but oh, I need to get to this because this, it just sounds like a fun time. Then I have Lion Boy by Zizou Corda. It's someone that can talk to cats, like, it sounds interesting. And then I also have the next two books in that trilogy, The Chase and The Truth. Then I have Who's Afraid by Maria Lewis. This sounds kind of interesting, something about being a wolf and it's set in New Zealand. I'm not sure, but I have been keen to read this for a while. I'm not ready to let it go. Let's just put it that way. And then I have two books that are very much labyrinth vibes. So you know, the, the movie with David Bowie. These next two books just sound exactly like that. So we have The Spindlers by Lauren Oliver and Moon Dream by Victor Osborne. Similar plots sound like the labyrinth. So I'm keeping both of them. Then I have Mist Walker by Chandra Mitchell, someone that is trapped inside the lighthouse that they call the Grey Man. He's trapped inside until he can collect 1,000 souls. So that sounds interesting. And then I have Winky by Clifford Chase. It's a teddy bear coming to life. It sounds fun, okay? I'll show you how many I have left now. That many. Okay, we are at the end. So I have two stacks of books that I'm keeping, four that I'm not. So the ones I'm not keeping, A Dragon Rider by Cornelia Funke. This is, I just am not particularly interested in it anymore. Don't know why. And then I have The Dragonette Prophecy and The Lost Air, which are the first two books in the Wings of Fire series by T.T. Sutherland. Yeah, I don't think I'm interested in these. And then I have Say Real by Garth Nix. I wanted to read it because it was like one of those classic stories that you read, but I don't actually think this is my type of thing. So I'm getting rid of that as well. Next up the two large stacks of books that I'm keeping. I really didn't expect to be keeping as many books as I am from the fantasy and paranormal shelves. Like I'm kind of scared to put them all back because what if they're just going to look as cluttered as they were before. Anyway, I have Shakespeare Undead by Laurie Handeland. It sounds cool, okay? Look, Shakespeare has vampire things. And I have This Monstrous Thing by Mackenzie Lee. Like steampunk elements and their two brothers. I have The Haunting of Sunshine Girl by Paige Mackenzie. I love a good scary ghost story. We have The Boneless Mercies by April Genevieve Tuckle. It sounds interesting and also sounds like female badassery, so I do love that. And we have The Ghost at the Point by Charlotte Calder. Again, ghosts. I like ghosts. We have The Witch's Boy by Michael Gruber. This is, like, it's kind of interesting because there's a the ugliest boy in the world. Has a bear for a nanny, a genie as a servant, and only a cat to talk to. Then I have The Unholy Cause by Joe Schreiber. This is a supernatural book. I didn't know these were a thing and then I saw this at an op shop and I was like yeah I'll buy that um, and now I want to own all of them because Supernatural is one of my favorite TV shows. Obviously I have a TBR game inspired by it. Rosemary and Rue, the first in the October Day series by Sean and Maguire. I'm not super interested in the premise of this but I do really enjoy Sean Maguire's writing. We have Max Helsing, Monster Hunter by Curtis Jobling. Monster Hunting, I love. Then we have The Ever After by Jodie Lynn Anderson, as well as Among the Stars, which is the sequel. I thought I would be getting rid of these, but it talks about like the Book of the Dead. I love a good horror, so I'll give it a go. We have Nightmare by Robin Parrish a amusement park called Ghost Town and the daughter of two world-renowned ghost hunters and a haunted house. It sounds amazing. I need to read this. We have Strange Angels by Lily St. Crow. This basically sounds like the TV show Supernatural, so I'm interested. Then I have Mythos and Heroes by Stephen Fry. I don't know when I'm ever going to get to these, and I probably won't for several years, but I do love me some good Greek myths, so I'll keep these. Now I'm finally done sorting through them, except now I have to put all of these books back on my shelves in some kind of like aesthetically pleasing way. Here is what the shelves look like now. This is the paranormal. Oh, 
you know, tried to kind of rainbow, doesn't super work. But then those are all of the taller books that don't actually fit if I stand them upright, so they had to go like that. And then in the corner there that you can't really see is a little figurine that my grandmother had. And then this is the fantasy shelf, which I did do the rainbow and it works a little better. Those two shells done and dusted.